All right, Mr. Jim Willis, welcome back. Uh, I'm very happy to have you to have you here again to have the opportunity to speak once more and to well to, to connect during this time of social isolation, social distancing. Yes, uh, to yes. have the chance to connect with with well with somebody that uh, I've come to to respect a lot and have a, a great deal of appreciation for um, because of our previous conversation which really was, was quite beautiful so well I'm I once again I'm really excited to speak and um, how are you Jim? Wonderful Rafa thank you it's good to be with you again my friend there's a lot happened since we talked last. Mm, there has. Yeah tell me. Uh, <laughs> well it's just uh, yeah, you know, the social isolation that everybody is going through all over the world is, is not particularly changing our way of life at all, living out here in the woods as we do. We, we don't hardly see anybody anyway. But, uh, oh, it's been, it's been so hard knowing that the, uh, uh, hearing the news on the television, sometimes I just have to stop watching it. Uh, it it's, there's a, a spirit, a feeling of uh, great, great uh, tension and anxiety and uh, you can just feel it all over the world it's mm -hmm. it's hard it's really hard you can um, uh, when you when you try to meditate and try to get outside of yourself and your own situation you're hit with this great it seems like almost a worldwide wall or or, or field of, of of tension uh i hope it's beginning to break I hope it's. I hope people are beginning to find their way through. We are a resilient race, and um, I my hope is not necessarily in the leadership because they can only do so much. But I have a tremendous amount of hope in the um, uh, the people who care for one another and who reach out to one another. And some of the stories I find very uplifting of people reaching out to help someone. Um, I found a, heard a wonderful story the other day in New York City about two people who had apartments, which were just a small ways across an, across an alley, and they had discovered how to play ping pong from, from window to window. They were hitting this ping pong ball back and forth between windows. Another, another person uh, uh, met somebody by sending a, a a drone with a basket of flowers over to her window and dropped it off and they started dating long distance because of that. When you hear stories like that, you realize it's hard to get people down when they're, uh, when they're looking at the positive side. I hope we can do that. I, I do have the feeling that uh, we're at a, a bit of a crossroads right now. We can go two different directions uh, and uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we go the positive way. I'm hoping that we, make the decision for uh, enlightenment rather than discouragement and death. Uh, and I did a um, uh, meditation uh, a podcast here in this country, uh, meditation a while back for a man named, uh, for a man named uh, Cliff Dunning, who's, uh, I'm going to be on his program again on Saturday. And he was so caught with it. He wanted to do a meditation to just to do some positive, positive work. So I, there are islands of hope out there in this great sea of anxiety, and uh, I, I look forward to those. I really do. Yeah, I did the meditation myself. I think it's one in you. You, got, you have in YouTube, right? Pardon me. It's the uh, one you uh, have in uh, the meditation. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, that's right. I, yeah, I, I, I think that's uh, you. You saw that. It was, it mm. was very short because we our time was limited. But I'm hoping it will reach out to as many people as possible. Mm. It's up on my YouTube page right now. If anybody wants to uh, to look for it and they can use it themselves, they can find it on my YouTube page. Um, uh, the YouTube page is under the name Jim Willis, but there's so many Jim Willises out there that if you look up Jim Willis, what a wonderful world, I think, for instance, Jim Willis, what a wonderful world, you'll find a whole bunch of YouTubes uh, of uh, presentations that I've done, and this is this is one of them. And I hope uh, I hope your listeners will be able to take advantage of it we can join together in this kind of meditation yeah i'll link to it in the description so that oh, people wonderful. have a, Thank you. a direct access to it great and great great yeah like you were saying the um, the human spirit 
um, despite all this, all this craziness, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting to, to get very much into, into talking about these issues of uh -huh. the pandemic, of the social distancing, all that in the show. I, I like a few weeks back, I was like, okay, should I uh, get into the topics? I, I don't really want to very much because of the, I understand. the negative I understand. side, but at the same time, it's like, it's kind of inevitable because I thought it would be kind of over soon, but it's like we were um, maybe speaking a bit before we started the show. It's looking like it's probably going to be extending for a, for a, for some time, some undefined time. So I, I'm thinking that, yeah, it's, yeah. It's important yeah, expect, to talk about it on the on. I expect so. It's 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 a part of our context. Uh, mm. We all would like a break from it, and I can understand not wanting to to dwell on it. But uh, it it I, 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 I know you. I see your point. I really understand where you, where your position is there. That's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, and especially what I what I want to talk about about um, all this this issue is like you were mentioning the human spirit and. And how, despite all the um, the the um, the paranoia, and despite all the unknowns, right, and the and the fear that's that's coming up, there's always stories like the ones you were telling me, and 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 people. Something that's really important for me during this time, that's come up, uh, especially in in uh, in in the um, every Wednesday. We're doing uh, some something like a group. It's not a group meditation per se, but we do include meditation at the end uh, mm -hmm. with my girl, my girlfriend and I. We uh, in social media, particularly in, on Instagram, we are we are holding a space for conversation with Wonderful. with the people that follow us, and and we're doing that every Wednesday and and before. Um, like a month or so ago, we, we were doing it from Tuesday to Friday, but it started being a little bit too, too much uh, yeah, yeah. to hold all, all that energy. So we are, we're doing it every Wednesday right now. And the, the thing, the beautiful thing that's come up is how much people are connecting to their spirituality. So yes. I'm, I'm looking at this time as something similar to what happened during 9-11, that many people woke up to... Um, to bigger aspects of themselves, yes. you know, through yes. through a kind of very strange event that happened. People, some people woke up, some people uh, fell asleep even more. You know, some people, um, they realize that there's yeah. there's more to, to life, to yeah. existence, yeah. Where, when others perhaps just they can conform to whatever's going on or whatever. But this is a very great time for human awakening, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. There's a, a, a wonderful story that went, um, that, as they say, went viral here in the United States, at least. Um, of course, New York City is the epicenter and New York State is the epicenter of the pandemic here in America. And there was a, a man, a, a farmer from, I, I may be wrong, I'm, I'm thinking it was out in Idaho. And uh, he happened to have five um, masks that he had, that he used uh, around the farm sometimes. And he had five of them. Now that doesn't seem like very much when you compare it to all of the cases in New York, the epicenter of the pandemic. But he wanted to do what he could. So he sent these five masks to New York to one of the hospitals in New York for their use. Now that doesn't seem like a very big thing, but it was all that he had. And he gave literally everything that he had and that to possibly help. You wouldn't think that would make any a difference and people think, well, it was just a little gesture like that, except that the governor of New York found out about it and he talked about it uh, on his daily briefing. And this made this farmer famous. So here was just a little gesture done by one person who simply gave all he had uh, to New York City. It's, it's a drop in the bucket compared to all the cases they have. But now 
it was blown up way out of out of context and everybody knows about it this little gesture i just think that's a wonderful thing so when anybody thinks i can't do very much boy you never know <laughs> what that little bit that you do can can really do to help i think it's a wonderful wonderful story and uh, i'm i'm sure that when the time is over when we're talking about all this and historians begin to look at all of this just like 911 for instance here in in the, our country when it happens, uh, I'm sure it's these little stories that are gonna become famous, not the pettiness, not the anxiety, but the, the little stories of hope. And uh, that's gonna be the key, I think. Yeah, I think so too. But the, the stories like the, the toilet paper, uh, that's oh, yeah. going to go down yeah. in history. How, how uh, that's, I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, people can, can in, in in situations of panic and and big great unknowns, people mm -hmm. yeah, they 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 turn to to the basics and to to yeah. try to hold the the base of their of their structure yeah. of, of their lives, and yeah. Yeah, in in some cases it's it's going to manifest as fear of not having paper to wipe your butt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know it, it's a it's it's a it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be inspirational if, when we come out the other side, uh, it's going to be different. And I hope that's what we learn. If we can take one thing away from this, it's that we can't return to normal. Normal was what got us into this problem. Uh, this is an opportunity. And I love the, the, the Chinese uh, character. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, but I know the one the, the one character that means both um, uh, the positive and the negative. It means uh, the ending, but it also means a new opportunity. I just think it's so important that we do not squander this opportunity we've been given. As terrible as this pandemic is, it's it's an opportunity to come out the other side different. And I I'm just praying above all that we do that. Otherwise, we've wasted it. Yeah, I think so. It's like uh, a great opportunity to to rise and to mm -hmm. take like a, a quantum leap, and a, yes, a yes. quantum step upward uh -huh. towards our realization, towards um, knowing ourselves more and better, and knowing what power mm -hmm. we really hold, which is something that we've lost, uh, perhaps yes. contact with, right? Because yeah. we are so well, dependent on on technology and um, and outside uh, sources of yeah. power yes. that that we forgot. Well, yeah, the, the the last time you and I talked, I think we talked a little about um, the fact that we live such busy lives and such hectic lives. Well, this is this has changed that. <laughs> maybe we brought it on, Rafi. Maybe you and I talking about it. Maybe maybe it was seen as a prayer and uh, the. The, uh, whatever gods there be may have said, uh, well, we'll take away the busyness and see how they do. <laughs> yeah. And, um, well, like, <clears throat> thinking about this quantum leaps and meditation uh -huh. and, and um, the possibility of, of starting new practices uh, yeah. during this time that can help us um, improve our 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 self-knowledge and mm -hmm. and get in touch with that inner wisdom uh, maybe we could we could you could tell us a little bit um, one of your books is called quantum akashic field and uh, it's we I think we mentioned it also uh, last time yes uh, but we didn't go very much into it and I know it's got it's connected to to out-of-body experiences and perhaps there's a way that we can we can use those type of experiences to to, well, to, to feed all this, yes. this new yes. possibility and to create a, a new humanity and a new world in the future? Yeah, yeah. I, I have uh, come to believe over the last decade, probably more, but in the last decade is when I've had time to really practice it. I've, I've, I've come to believe that we come from what I like to call the source. Um, all my life, I use the word God but I understand now that a lot of people have different, totally different conceptions of what happens when I say the word God. There's a lot of baggage attached to that word. 
So I like to use the word the source right now because it's not um, necessarily developed uh, in, uh, by any particular or claimed by any particular um, religion or even spiritual system of belief. The source, the, the central oneness, the central unity, and I've come to believe that that was where our journey began. In the source, all is unity, all is oneness. And in the source, we cannot experience individuality. There is no individuality because all is oneness. But individuality is an important um, journey for us to make, to learn how to be separate from the source, to be individuals. It's a very important experience for us to leave the source, to come out, to experience that, to be separated from the source, to experience individuality, not only the good parts, but the bad parts, because individuality involves duality. And we're in a world that has great good and great evil. The pandemic shows this, how, how a terrible thing can still produce good experiences like we talked about earlier. So here, I think we've made all of us, I think, a very courageous, courageous decision to leave the source, to come out here into the material world. And that's where the word quantum Akashic field comes from. Because in my view, the quantum Akashic field is that field of every single possibility, of every single potential. And we go through that field and uh, in that field, we begin to determine direction. We begin to determine uh, what course our individual journey is going to take. And I believe that eventually every single potential, every single possibility will someday be experienced by uh, individuals who leave the source, have their individual journey, and then return to the source carrying that information. The problem is that here in this world, and I... I I, I, I really don't want to be uh, misunderstood here, but here in this world, um, as individuals, we develop a way of, of thinking uh, that I call the ego. The ego is the expression of individuality. Now, an ego can be a wonderful thing because without individuality, there, of course, can be no ego. But the trouble is, here in this material world, it is so easy for the ego to become, to take over, so to speak. Now, I believe consciousness is universal. I don't think we, we manufacture consciousness. Uh, consciousness uh, is universal, and I, I don't think it's, it originates in the brain. I think the brain is just simply a receiver or a conductor of consciousness. But I do believe that ego uh, arises in the brain. And in that sense, in my own tradition, and in my own Christian tradition, we talk about the possession of a demon, uh, demon possessed. And sometimes I have the feeling, and I'm speaking not just metaphorically here, but sometimes I, I actually feel demon possessed when I'm trying to meditate and my mind will not quiet down. It just chatters on and on and throws all kinds of things at me and, and tries to get me distracted. It's almost as if the ego realizes that it's time in my body, in this you know, material manifestation of individuality, it's almost as if the ego realizes that when I leave this body, the ego is no more. I return to unity where there is no ego. And it almost becomes, I hate to use the word enemy, but that's what it feels like sometimes, that there is something that has taken over possession of my mind, of my thoughts. And meditation, I believe, is really the only way to learn how to control that ego. Uh, I don't think we can ever destroy it. I don't want to use the term going to war with it or anything like that, because we definitely took it on. But ego, I think out of fear, uh, because ego is mortal, even though we are immortal beings, uh, the ego is mortal, individuality, the individual journal, journey has a beginning and an end. And so I think it is only in meditation that we can learn uh, how to uh, come to grips with the ego. We can't destroy it, but we can learn to make sure it keeps its place in us and doesn't take over. 
I think every evil person that have ever that's ever lived, every a bad deed that's ever been done, has been done because someone's ego uh, wanted power or money, uh, greed, all of those things. They wanted something. Um, and that is the nature. And that's where I'm hoping we are right now in the human race. I'm hoping we can come to the part when I talk about enlightenment, it's coming to grips with the idea that the ego is there and not allowing the ego and all of its selfishness to predominate as it has throughout so much of our history. So when I talk about out-of-body experiences in the quantum akashic field, what I'm talking about is trying to get outside of that, uh, I think we talked about this last time, that five-fold fence of our five senses, the touch, taste, hearing, smell, and sight. Um, within that fence, that's where the ego operates. Everything that comes to us in this material manifestation comes through those, those five senses. But if we can somehow understand this, I think understanding is the first step, understand it, learn how to work with it, learn how to get outside of that fence and appreciate not our reality, but the greater reality that really is, the reality of consciousness and, and, and love and compassion and all of those things that exist in the, in the source, uh, in, in, in unity. If, if we can begin to experience those, I think we can revolutionize the human race. But it's a difficult problem. Uh, ever since uh, 6,000 years ago, when the Hindu rishis first developed the whole idea of Brahman, the great unknowable, what I would call the source that you can't even describe or talk about, that that Brahman is here within us, Atman. And when they say, thou art that, the great unspeakable, Un unknowable, um, but just barely perceived essence of reality, that's within us. And that's, I think, what out-of-body experiences are all about, trying to let Atman out of his cage and experience Brahman, experience reality as it is, not just as it seems to us. Yeah, perhaps even in, in, your, uh, in your tradition, uh, sometimes the word the adversary is used. Yes, yes, the adversary. And in, in the Christian tradition, uh, I, I've come to interpret it vastly different than I did for most of my life growing up. But I find um, that when I was growing up, there were certain um, polar opposites that I couldn't, for, for instance, get along with. Uh, the Apostle Paul, for instance, in the New Testament of the Christian Bible, says, uh, greater is he who was within you than he who was in the world. And then in 1 John, we read, um, we know that the whole, that we are of God, but the whole world is in the hands of the adversary, the hands of the evil one. How can greater is he who is within us, uh, how can that be true if the whole world is in the hands of the evil one. And I think all we can do is begin to grasp both of those, as the Buddha taught us so well. Grasp both the polarities. Don't identify with one or the other, but find the middle way that leads to the place that embraces both. Um, and I think that's probably what out-of-body experiences are all about. Uh, out-of-body experiences are, are, are all, all over the place in, in my own uh, tradition. Um, Isaiah in the Old Testament had an out-of-body experience where he was transported to another dimension that he called heaven. And he saw uh, hybrid, hybrid beings that were half animal and half human. It's, it's a shamanic experience. I think Isaiah was just a shaman. And he received a message, which is another typical shamanic experience. Who shall I send? And he said, here, send, send me. And he was given the command to go back and to bring healing. Um, Ezekiel in the Old Testament, the prophet Ezekiel had that wonderful experience where he saw the, the uh, uh, again, the hybrid beings that were part animal and part human. And he saw this, what, what sounds to me like an unidentified flying object uh, being piloted by an actual entity. And the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 12 says, I was, he, he, he was taken out of body. He said, whether in the body or out of the body, I'm not sure, but I was taken to heaven. Um, Moses and Elijah uh, 
both died suspicious deaths in the Old Testament. But at the Mount of Transfiguration, when James took his inner circle, when Jesus took his inner circle of Peter, James, and John up on the Mount, Mount of Transfiguration, here's Moses and Elijah step right out of another dimension, and they're all transfigured, and they shine with light. And Peter, James, and John and saw this. The angel Gabriel, who we always think about as an angel, but another way of thinking about him is, is, is an, an entity from another dimension. He met with Daniel in the Old Testament. He met with Mary in the New Testament. He met with Muhammad in the Quran, the same angel, Gabriel. Uh, I, I think what we have, even in the Christian tradition, we have uh, our, our tradition is full of what I'm talking about, the out-of-body experience and our relationship with folks from the, or beings from the quantum Akashic field. If we just open our eyes and stop being so dogmatic and, and full of so much dogma and, and, and doctrine and open our eyes to what is there, I think um, whatever religious tradition we're, we happen to be in, whether it's monotheism, whether it's polytheism, pantheism, uh, spiritualism, whatever it is, um, I, I think at the core, we find that same thing over and over again of people who are simply moving out of body to experience a, a real reality rather than our perception of it. And how important I think it is for people like ourselves and uh, to, um, to start talking about these subjects in, in this new way and giving it mm. a new context and a new perspective. And, yes. and like telling our own stories, like for example, when, when you were speaking, uh, I've had a few, um, now, now that I speak with you, I, I could call them out of body experiences. Uh -huh. um, uh, specifically one that came up <clears throat> was uh, in, a, in a plant ceremony. Um, I, I was, or my awareness, my consciousness was transported mm -hmm. to, and and just as a as a caveat, it's really hard to explain all these things, you know. Oh yes, like there, yes. There's so much like be beyond or behind words that it's yes. really really hard to to actually express what one went through. So I say that my consciousness was transported, but in another. Another way would be that reality was replaced by something ah, else. Yeah, yeah same, my, my same perception was sure, replaced. Yeah. And I, I was in, 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 this, in this darkness, and in that darkness there were these um, anthropomorphic figures that were dancing. Yes, yes. reminded me of, of this Hindu idea of Leela, the, yeah. um, the universal uh, play. Right, sure. and these these beings, these shapes, they were dancing, and they were humanoid, anthropo anthropomorphic shapes, uh -huh. yeah. and the the interior of them was like when you look out at the galaxies at night, you know, at mm -hmm. the stars, it was like they were universes in themselves, you yes. know. Yeah. And, and they were all dancing together and playing wonderful one wonderful. With the other um, and, wonderful. and and the the one of the the most interesting experiences that i had was that on on the first on the one hand i i was looking at them and then i had the the experience so the the way that that during that ceremony i was able to to reach that that other place was mm -hmm. that I was just sitting, my eyes closed, mm -hmm. and I felt my body like shutting down, you know? Uh -huh. I felt like I died in a way. Yeah. So I, I, I could, it's again, it, it, it brings like uh, tears to my eyes and, and it's really hard sure. to put words. Sure. And, and yet your mind was fully awake, I bet. Oh, completely, completely, yeah. yes. Yeah. That was totally the case. And, and I felt like dying and that I went there. But then these entities, or, or perhaps one of them, um, they, 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 they got in my body mm -hmm. and they animated it again. So the, um, the idea that I used to explain this is like when you put a hand in a glove, yeah. you know, in that same way, 
one of the entities got into my body and, and in, in that moment I, I felt like I came back into the body, like I, I was alive again, you know, and, and then it went out and I again felt like, shut, like a shutdown. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like, it, it wasn't something fearful, you know, that, that, um, that, that small death, that mm -hmm. going back to, to, to this place that I, I, I experienced it like it's behind uh, mm -hmm. reality in a way. It was very, very serene and calm, you know, that, that letting go. Um, it, it reminds me of something that I think I mentioned the phrase last time that Randa said, death is like taking off a tight shoe. And it, that, that phrase came to my mind at the moment. It was like, wow, it's, this is so simple, so easy, so natural. And I would go, so they, they, it came into the body, it came out, yeah. and I could see them dancing and all that. But then there was this also this awareness yes. that connects all this experience with what you were saying before about yeah. Brahman. There was yeah. this awareness that I was watching them. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So yeah. at first it was like I slightly, um, my identity went like from the body to, uh -huh. to them, kind of an identification with them. But then a third uh, perspective came up, which was, there is something observing them and yes. then an infinite regression of there's something observing that which is observing them and yeah. so on and so on going back and back perhaps yeah. or most likely to the source that you the source about. yeah yeah i um you're you're absolutely right when you talk about language being inadequate uh, we talk about being out of body i i don't know if we really leave the body or if we just become conscious of what is out there um, we I, the term out of body experience has been coined by robert monroe so i use it but uh, i think you're absolutely right the trouble is what we experience out there how can we possibly describe it with language that's been invented to describe what happens inside that that box inside this reality but uh, robert monroe used to always talk about the condition of body asleep, mind awake. And uh, I understand exactly what it is. The first time I had an experience uh, similar to this, it was, um, uh, it, 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 it came to me in what I now perceive as a shamanic journey. I didn't I know what that's what I was doing at the time, but it came after four days of uh, partial fasting and meditating out in the woods. And uh, it involved me getting my totem animal, which is a rough grouse. And uh, I didn't understand what the the uh, significance of the rough grouse was until I called my daughter, who is uh, really on top of all things uh, Indian, Native American, Indigenous Americans. And uh, she wrote back to me that said, uh, a rough grouse is getting in tune, means you have to get your body and your soul and your spirit in tune with the dance of life, which was just what you were talking about. Uh, about 20 minutes before we started talking, I was talking to a friend of mine who was talking about the constellation Lyra, which is named after Lyre or named after Orpheus, the Lyre that Orpheus made. Uh, and here they're describing the music of the spheres, uh, music, dancing, uh, all of those words that you just used, they all tie us into the same experience, don't they? That the universe is alive and it's, and it's dancing and it's rejoicing and it's thriving and when we're here within that egoistic experience sometimes we lose touch with that um, i'm hoping that when this pandemic goes through we can all hit the streets the first thing people will do is spontaneously dance i would love to see that <laughs> i i've played in uh, in dance bands all my life, music was my first career. And there was times when I was playing for dances, oh, every single Friday, Saturday night. And yet, I love to watch people dance, but I can't do it. I can't make myself get out of the dance floor and dance. And uh, now I'm told, that because the rough grouse is my totem animal, I'm supposed to get in tune with the dance of life. And that's why I thought it was so significant that one of the most joyous uh, out-of-body experiences I ever had was meeting um, 
uh, a figure, an entity who had left this life but hadn't moved on yet. Uh, she was still here as a child in this, in this uh, tied to this life in that gray area. Uh, it wasn't at all painful. Uh, she wasn't aware of the passage of time even, but my job was to get her to uh, go on to the next life and go on to the light. And in my out-of-body experience, we met down at the medicine wheel that my wife and I built some years ago. And there at the medicine wheel, um, she taught me the dance that was so sacred to her family. And there I found myself actually for the first time in my life, even though it was out of body, dancing. And it was just such a joyous experience that I just can't help but think that uh, music and dance and all of that are just so tied up with this whole thing, which brings us right back full circle, I guess, to out of body experience. Whatever else they are, it has to do with vibration. And vibration is music. Uh, vibration is is uh, um, in, interpreted. Uh, you know, musical tones are just different vibration, frozen in, in in sound, so to speak. So, if if we can hear the music of the spheres, if we can hear the music of the ages, uh, if we can listen to the Old Testament psalmist who said, "The hands, the the hills, clap their hands, and the trees sing for joy." Um, the music is going around us all the time. If we can only hear it and dance to the tune. Uh, there was a song, I, I don't know if it was in your country or not, but in my country there was a song, oh, years and years ago, uh, Give Me the Beat Boys and Free My Soul. I want to be lost in your rock and roll and drift away. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful uh, imagery, that's for sure. Um, I think, um, yeah, everything you were, you were just sharing is, is really beautiful, um, about dancing, uh, about vibration, music. Yeah. I mean, I'm a musician as well. Music is, has been my passion for, for forever. Yeah. Um, art in general. And there's, I was trying to remember this, this phrase, this quote, um, it's something like, um, like mu music is is like painting in time, something like that. Uh, uh, like, as, just like painting is 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 for space, uh -huh. music is for is in time. Some, yeah. some yeah, I, like I can't remember quite the the quote exactly. I like that, yeah. and and it, and it, and we communicate so well through music. I, um, my first love is 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 jazz, and I played for many years with a a wonderful jazz quintet. And there were times when we were up on the stage playing music together when we were just so connected. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew exactly what was gonna happen before the other guy did it. Mm -hmm. And we finished one set that was just so particularly inspired. I'll never forget it. Um, we, we finished playing and we wound it up and, oh, we couldn't say anything. All we could do was just breathe. And uh, I said, man, nothing like it. And the guy playing tenor sax said, yeah, man, it's better than anything. He says, it's better than sex. The trouble was his microphone was still live and his wife was sitting in the front row. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what was waiting for him when he went home that night, but yeah. it's, it's just, it's just such a beautiful, uh, it's such a beautiful expression and it has to do with vibration. And, and talk about uh, out of body experiences. I, yeah. I've had <laughs> moments like that, uh, playing the bass, for example. Yeah. And yeah. wow, yeah, you, you're like, I'm like looking at, at myself playing. And yeah. It's like, yeah. Not a pilot in a way. Yeah. Oh, and, and playing bass, it's, it's one. I, I play some bass myself. And to be, uh, the bass is such a transition instrument between uh, between rhythm and harmony. Um, you're you're standing right in the middle where it's all happening, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, it's it's wonderful, isn't it? You can just when when you actually get outside of yourself and just see yourself playing and realize, yeah, you had to do all the work, you had to learn all the theory, you had to learn all the stuff. But once you've learned it, once it become a part of you, you're not conscious of it anymore. It's just gone, and you're just you're just being. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, absolutely uh, an experience of letting go, and yeah. that's one of, another of of the paradoxes that we need to 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 accept in life is uh, how how our best is is done when we let go. Yeah, and letting go isn't something that we can do really because if you're doing it, you're still holding on to something. Exactly. And oh yes. That, that that kind of moment I, I call grace. Because, yes. Um, I, I've also read the Bhagavad Gita, and in there, um, Krishna uh, yes. explains how how it's actually not we, uh, the um, perhaps the ego or the the personality is not the one that's actually doing. Mm -hmm. So so he asks us to to let go of the fruit of our actions because actually the one that is doing doing the doing is actually mm -hmm. God. It's actually source. Yes. And, yeah. and, the, and the one that's enjoying the fruits of those actions is also God, and it's not us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and that is the, really the purpose, isn't it, of this individual journey to make those kinds of experiences possible, to become a vehicle, to become a conduit, to become a channel for that which is greater, and then to channel that which is greater than ourselves. The wonderful grace of channeling that into the world of the material oh it's a it's a wonderful thing it's a wonderful thing and uh, we don't uh, I, I love the way you say you can't do it because once you start to do it you're not doing it <laughs> well it's really the truth you just and and yet it takes a, a certain amount of craft uh it takes a certain amount of, of study and to to learn the rules or to at least put yourself within the framework of the rules and yet some of the freest musicians I've ever worked with um, never studied music formally. They knew all the rules because they just kind of absorbed them. But they learned, uh, they learned to play guitar on the back porch, you know, up in the mountains and that kind of a thing. But to sit down and play with some of those people who were so free not to be bound by the rules that they've studied, but just to, um, uh, well, work within them uh, without even thinking. Uh, and just let this flow out and that's where that's where the magic happens uh, and I, I like to use I'm going to use that word magic more often uh, I used to think oh magic is you know but no I think magic it, it happens when the essence of all that is uh, somehow transports us and, and, and it actually changes um, changes our reality it produces something that's different I, when i was going to music school of course i had to study the music of johann sebastian bach who once said no music should be written that is not to the glory of god so i learned all of his rules and what really gets me is i could sit there and write a bach chorale or write a bach two-part invention and i could follow every single one of his rules but it didn't sound like him <laughs> it was different he had the magic and uh uh, I, I wonder what might have happened if a, a Mozart had lived past the age that he did, uh, if he had been allowed or to, uh, to give us another 50 years, what might have happened? Uh, I wonder when I hear some of these really, well, I went to, I went to school with a, a, a bass player. I mean, you maybe come across him, Tony Levin. Tony, yeah, Tony Levin and, and uh, Steve Gadd were uh, classmates of mine. Uh, Tony was a fraternity brother of mine, and uh, I listened. He, he came on the scene right when uh, the bass was really changing. People were still using upright stand-up basses, and he he saw his first his first Fender bass guitar, and he got his first one. And uh, while he was still in school, we didn't know what he was doing. We didn't know that he was piloting, starting off a whole new a whole new you know branching off in a whole new direction. But it, we would listen to him and hear a transformation of something we'd never heard before and realize, what could we call it? It, it? it was magic. Something was happening right before our eyes. When he and, uh, and Steve Gadd, uh, the drummer, were playing with uh, Chuck Mangione, and, uh, or when they played with um, um, uh, uh, Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel, and when they did the concert in New York and all that kind of stuff. Uh, to hear 
this essence of how they took something that we all had understood. We all learned it together at the same time. We were all in school at the same time, studying with the same teachers, and yet it became something totally different. That is what I'm hoping will happen throughout this, when we come out the other side of this pandemic, when people will realize we're going to take what we had and we're going to keep the good, but we're going to transform it. And we're going to make a whole new way of living, just like they created a whole new way of music, of doing music. Um, I, I just hope that, that, and I hope and pray that that's, that's where we go. That's where we're headed. Yeah, I really hope so too. And um, I'm super uh, excited to, to, to dance outside as, soon as, uh, as all of this is yeah. over or or as soon as I, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I'm going to go outside, I'm going to dance. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going to film myself and I'm going to send you the video. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, uh, I hope that this is all over by September. I know we were, the last time we were on, we were talking about that, that tour that I'm scheduled to um, lead a group of people to uh, ancient sites in Turkey. I've been studying about it so much uh, in terms of the new book that I'm writing. I'm involved, very much involved right now in writing a book about the, uh, the books that didn't get included in the Bible, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls or the uh, uh, Nag Hammadi uh, treasures or uh, a lot of the books that were considered and then turned down, the Book of Enoch and some of these others. And so I'm involved with all of these, uh, take me back into these biblical studies that I've been studying my whole life and realized how much Turkey enters into that. Uh, Turkey was the birthplace of Abraham. It was right on the Fertile Crescent. Uh, it was where Jacob fled from his brother Esau um, over and over again. And I'm hoping that the uh, pandemic has died down enough where we can still go on this tour because I've written about all these places. I visited farther south, uh, but I have never been up in Turkey. And uh, we're hoping to do that in September. So if any of your listeners are interested in, in following along or wanting to go, if they uh, go to the Ancient Origins magazine website, um, they can find all the details for it. But it's, it's looking to be quite a trip. And uh, of course, Gobekli Tepe is going to be quite high on the list. We're going, we're going to go, uh, Gobekli Tepe twice. We're going to start out in uh, Istanbul and uh, see the places like the, the Blue Mosque and the Sunken Palace and the Ankara Museum. Uh, we'll be going to uh, Cappadocia and Durankuyu and the underground rock cities and the uh, uh, Chatelhoyuk and all of those places. Uh, we're going to be going to some of the great uh, 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 places of Gobekli Tepe and the birthplace of Aaron and all of this kind of stuff. So here's hoping that by September, <laughs> this will all be a memory and we can still go. That's a fantastic, a fantastic trip. I mean, oh, I hope those, so. places, yeah. those places like, uh, they, they're like, I, they're, I, I don't have words to. to yes. They, yeah, they, they are like, um, and they are part of all of us. Yes, uh, it, the birthplace of our civilization, right there near Gobekli Tepe, the place where, um, in in the Noah's Ark legends, where the ark was supposed to have landed, and where Cain was supposed to have built the first city, um, and uh, all of those places. I'm going with. Uh, it's in conjunction. Uh, with Travel the Unknown is the name of the uh, tourist organization, but it's in conjunction with Ancient Origins. And uh, for years, I've uh, had a wonderful relationship with my editor at Ancient Origins. I've written quite a few articles for them. And her name is uh, Dr. Mickey Pistorius, and she is uh, she's a real expert. Her, her doctorate was uh, in uh, uh, biblical archaeology. And uh, then she, she's also a, her, 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 actually, I guess her, her education is in biblical archaeology. Her doctorate is in psychology. And uh, she's going to be a wonderful, uh, a wonderful resource, the two of us together. And it will also give us a chance to meet for the first time. <laughs> she's, she writes from South Africa, and uh, I'm up here in, in North America. And so we've uh, been over, we've Skyped back and forth. We talk to each other and we write almost every week. We've never had a chance to meet. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll come to pass. Yeah, it would be, uh, for, for me, it would be amazing if, if I was able to, 
to join you guys. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? I'll have, to, I'll have to talk to them, Rafa. I think we'd have a wonderful time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All those, all those ancient sites and all the, the, the thoughts about the, the ancient human past, it, uh, it, uh, it, I, I feel it in my heart, you know? My, my yes. heart starts to yeah. Yeah. get all, all warm inside. Thinking yes. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like yeah. a very big connection to... To, 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 I mean, places that I haven't even been to in, in, in this lifetime, you know, um, I have uh, family origins from Europe, but it's more like Italy and Spain. Sure. Um, but, well, actually in, in Spain, there's, there's really ancient, ancient, uh, there's caves, you know, right? Sure. With the, with yeah. The drawings and. Oh, yeah. Caves, yeah. Which are like incredible. It's amazing. And, and we're discovering so much about our ancient history. And every time we discover something new, we always seem to push the timeline backwards in time. I think we are a much, much older civilization than we think, than we yeah, are. We're in for a, a big surprise when, as soon as, as all these uh, alternative theories begin uh, becoming a bit more mainstream and, and yeah. we're allowed to, to explore and study all these yeah. ancient places, yeah even yeah. deeper like for example gobekli tepe you were mentioning i know it's it's only been ex excavated a, a very small percentage of the sure. entire site yeah I, i think five five percent and it's all happened within the last 10 15 years uh, we're just beginning to discover what's over there um, i saw a little bit of gobekli tepe there's a um, there's a show on netflix i think it's a turkish show oh And yes yeah I'm just Uh, parts of the show happen in or around Gobekli Tepe. I think it's called The Symbol. Yeah, Mickey told me about that. And so my wife and I sat down and watched it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was quite, a, quite an interesting time. Mm. But uh, there's, there's just so much. That's where our civilization began. It's, it's really the, now we used to say that civilization began in Mesopotamia 6,000, 7,000 years ago. Now, all of a sudden, we've pushed that down to 11,000, 12,000 years ago, not in Mesopotamia, but up in Gobekli Tepe. That was where agriculture began. We used to say that um, it was after the agricultural revolution that we developed religions after we had settled in town. Now we're beginning to say it was just the opposite. It was the spirituality that caused them to build Gobekli Tepe. That was the, the religion, probably animism or something like it and uh, shamanism certainly and then to feed all these workers they had to develop agriculture so spirituality religion came first i think it was what made us human and actually um, in their in their own words the agriculture for example was given to them by some kind of spiritual revelation yes yes that's so right that absolutely because absolutely just having uh, developed the, the place Uh, because of spirituality and then out of nowhere inventing agriculture wouldn't make sense but yeah, yeah. they give us an, a kind of an explanation of where the food came from yeah <laughs> yeah yeah according to the uh, archaeologists the traditional archaeologists the, all these group of hunter gatherers just one day woke up and said let's move megaton boulders all over the place let's develop agriculture and one day they just decided to do it No, it, it came from somewhere. It really did. And I, that's where I think we have to turn to the mythology of these people and really listen to them, take them seriously. These were intelligent, spiritual, deeply connected people who can teach us so much. Uh, I think in, in many ways, um, religion has devolved rather than evolved. Um, my study of uh, the rishis and the ancient traditions in Hinduism Uh, that's some of the most profound, profound philosophy and profound spirituality that we've ever seen in the world. Um, I, I think, as a matter of fact, the quantum physicists are just beginning now to discover with their mathematics what the ancient rishis knew by intuition 6,000, 7,000 years ago. So maybe the two are coming together. Maybe. Maybe. Mm, yeah, recently um, I, I've been... I've been feeling these uh, in synchronicities of, of how much in our ancient past we were more connected to our intuition and now I we're so. more connected to the rational side and, yeah. and that the, and the, the, the sense that I'm getting, the intuition that I am getting right now, 
is that this time period we're going through, perhaps connected to the to the virus or whatever, mm-hmm. but this this particular time we are um, aligning those two or or integrating them again. Yes. You no. Know? Yes. Um, many many people have been speaking recently about about um, the balancing of both hemispheres of the brain, uh, the return of a, a kind of an embrace of of the 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 oriental and the occidental the east yes, and west yes. in the world you know there's many parallels of these kind of things um the two sides coming coming together you were also mentioning before the this idea of of the the ego and the consciousness the adversary yeah. and, and the source um, yes. the, the the self and the and the and the whole you know the 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 figure and the background and sure. we are sure. we're in a in a very interesting period where we are um, reconnecting those those yeah. sides of the spectrum i think i i, I think so and, and a lot of other traditions talk about it the uh, the mayan calendar that that said we are in a period of transition mm-hmm. uh in uh in oh there's so many different um the age of aquarius coming in uh it doesn't happen quickly of course it's you you can't keep going for thousands of years and all of a sudden wake up one morning and change but i think we're in the transition period and the trouble as you say and the trouble is the transitions are not comfortable always mm-hmm. because you don't know what's coming out the other side except through the eyes of faith and uh, that's what i'd like to try to keep going on my my eyes of faith tell me that we are in that period exactly that you're talking about um i would love to see it continue and i don't know if i'll live to see the complete transition within my lifetime but uh uh it's 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 here that's for sure yeah and you will be here definitely <laughs> i'll be here one way or another one way or another yeah um, rafa i love our, i love our conversations i see by the by the clock that we've already gone through the time we were talking about but uh, it's always wonderful to talk to you yeah Anytime. same for me i i really love how how deep they they can get, how much we have in common, and how we can we can um, uh, push each other in in or yes, yeah, yeah, push each other in now, certain directions. Someday I wish we could do this. If I had my keyboard and you had your bass, now that would be fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> Make some music together. I'm not playing bass anymore, um, but well, I, I'm not playing. Play. I'm not playing keyboard anymore either. So <laughs> I do play guitar. Yeah, that's what I. What I yeah. most, and actually, I'm learning also to play the the, the keyboard and the piano, and, and oh, great. More music in in that way. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Well, if we, if we ever do get together, you'll have to give me some some uh, some some tips because uh, I'm just an amateur bass player, but I'd love to get some tips from a pro. So someday, um, someday. Um, well, I mean, uh, I, I would love to go on. I don't know if if you have time, but. Uh, uh, don't we? Yeah, I, I see it's after it's after eleven o'clock our time, so we probably have to quit. But, but yeah. thank you uh, once again. It's been great. It's been wonderful. I appreciate yeah. it. Let's let's do it again. Okay. Sure. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Um, Jim, uh, if you if you will, please share some some uh, links to your social media or your website sure. where people can find you and sure and um, more about the the trip in September. Yeah, I'd love to hear from anybody uh, on my website, which is at www.jimwillis.net. Uh, there is a contact page, and I'd love to hear from you. I'm also on Facebook at jimwillis.author, and uh, we already talked about the YouTube page. I guess you have the link up there. So uh, I'd love to hear from people. Uh, give me an email through my contact site at the website. Once again, that's jimwillis.net, and uh, I'll get back to you because it's always uh, – it's always wonderful when we can share together, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, Jim, this has been, again, an, an excellent conversation, Thank a beautiful you. experience, which I've Thank been... Uh, Thank you, Rafa. Thank yeah. you. I feel really Appreciate blessed it. to have met you and to, to, to have these talks. Uh, they, they really reach my heart. And well, I, I hope you, you have a, a, a similar Thank experience you. on your side as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you, Rafa. We'll yeah. see you next time. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Okay.